What images come to mind when you hear slow food? My family and I live on First Fruits Farm, and slow food to us means growing and putting up as much food as we can, taking care of chickens, and enjoying slow food meals with family and friends. So what do you think of when you hear slow math? Tweets that have been hashtagged with slow math often bemoan boring professors who drone on and on with example after example. Hopefully you're not thinking, let the most boring class in existence begin, like Anna. Some people use slow math because they need for the math to slow down. We're learning three chapters in three hours. Let's just say I'm the only one not panicking. Others use slow math because they're embarrassed at how long it takes them to do the math. Kara tweets, based on how long it takes me to calculate a dinner tip, you'd never believe that I took and passed college-level calculus in high school. AJ is learning how to write linear equations. Apparently, the fourth time taking algebra was a charm. So what could slow math look like for students and teachers in the classroom? If we started a slow math movement, what would we value? If we wrote a slow math manifesto, what would we include? My 10-year-old was making hot chocolates the other day. She pulls out the one-third measuring cup out of the drawer and asks, where's the two-thirds measuring cup? I almost immediately said, just use that one twice. But I caught myself, and instead I asked, how could you use the one-third measuring cup to get two-thirds? She looked at it for just a moment before she said, I could use this one twice. I almost shortchanged the opportunity for Kate to make her thinking visible by quickly telling her what to do. Slow math has something to do with questions. E.E. E. Cummins wrote, always the beautiful answer who asks a more beautiful question. But as teachers, how do we learn to ask questions in response to the questions of our students? What questions are important to ask? In a more beautiful question, Warren Berger tries to figure out why students start school asking hundreds of questions a day, but then their questioning falls off a cliff as they go through school. In a slow math classroom, questions are not only welcomed, they are valued and sought. My students and I have been learning how to learn math using the math practices now for five years. These practices push me to think about slow math. How many teachers have you heard say, I don't have time for my students to learn like that? Slow math is about constructing viable arguments and critiquing the reasoning of others, which requires not only taking time to think about why something works, but also taking the time to listen to others' responses. When Kate was in third grade, she and I were in the grocery buying potato chips. We examined the labels. The small bag was 34 cents per ounce. The large bag was 29 cents per ounce. So I asked, which do we buy? She answered, the small bag. I was surprised. Kate had been comparing numbers successfully for a while. And so I asked, why'd you choose the small bag? Her response, doesn't food taste better when it's more expensive? In the slow math classroom, we take time to listen to our students' reasons. We worked some find the error problems recently from our textbook. What can you find right and wrong about this work? How can you correct it? When we got to number two, I asked, what's the error? And as always, someone said, I don't think we can use trig when the triangle isn't right. And I replied, well, not yet. Eventually, you'll be able to. But this year, in response to my not yet, Colton says, I worked it out. I drew in an altitude from angle B. And so he did, decomposing that obtuse triangle into two right triangles. This is what happens when students learn mathematics steeped in using the math practices. Without even being asked, they had practiced, I can make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. They had practiced, I can look for and make use of structure out of habit. In his book, In Praise of Slowness, Carl Honore writes, it is a cultural revolution against the notion that faster is always better. The slow philosophy is about doing everything at the right speed, savoring the hours and minutes instead of counting them. It's about doing everything as well as possible instead of as fast as possible. Slow math is about quality over quantity in our teaching and learning of mathematics. And so my challenge to you, 
What can you do when you get back next week to further this slow math movement? How can you make sure that students and teachers know that we have time to enjoy a slow math lesson, asking questions, engaging in productive struggle? Let's continue that conversation at the slow math hashtag.